Hello everyone, Carlos here from Justice Act Research Team. So this is our first video on our series on Sysmon. So at Justice Act, we decided to actually make our Sysmon training free out to the community. We are going to be breaking that training into small videos that you guys can watch. Let's say you want to find a subject specifically, let's say about double MI, you can go directly to that video. And the videos are going to, well, I'm going to try to keep them as short and as concise as possible so it's easier for you to go through them let's get started so what is sysmon now when we go out there to the internet and we start looking and doing searches and going into social media um, there are some misconceptions on it sysmon is system monitoring it's a free utility created by mark rusinovich and thomas garnier uh, at Microsoft specifically for enhancing what we capture inside of the event log. Now we're going to be seeing out there people say, no, this is a detection platform. We can write a bunch of rules and write all of our detections inside of Sysmon. Well, you can to a certain degree, but that's not the purpose of Sysmon itself. So Sysmon actually allows me to capture multiple data sources. And let's take, for example, process creation. I can then create rules as an XML file where I can say, you know what, all of this stuff is normal behavior of the system. Don't capture that. Let me exclude this type of behavior based on information that I can do via filters on the configuration file. And that is very neat because all of a sudden we're reducing that large amount of data that we're bringing over into our SIM because storage is expensive and SIM licenses are very expensive. So the ability for us to be able to filter out all of that data or and only to target what we want is of great value in terms that we now have a higher fidelity signal coming into our analytics. And that is great. That is one of the main reasons that I really like Sysmon. Now, when we look out there at multiple tools, uh, and this is one of the biggest misconceptions that we find in our industry, customers will go to us and they'll tell us like, hey, I'm going to run EDR X, Y, and C. And EDR X, Y, and C is going to have full coverage to everything that is happening in my environment. Sadly, that is not the case. We have been able to show that via pen test, via analysis. And when we look out there, and we start looking at the different tools. For example, in this case, I'm going into MITRE and MITRE did a very nice analysis of a state actor and they were looking at the coverage of the uh, multiple vendors, EDR vendors to all of the tactic techniques that this actor was using. And one of the things that we can see here is that we have quite a bit of gaps. Why? Because actors actually are constantly modifying their techniques to prevent behavior. We call this reducing the attack detection surface. So as you can see, we have gaps that are present in all of these different products. Now, when we go into MITRE and let's say we go into Attack Navigator and we enter all of those Sysmon sources, one of the things that we can actually see is that Sysmon provides us quite a large amount of coverage of different tactics if we implement our rules right. So this is why I really, really like Sysmon because Sysmon is another security layer that I have in my environment that will allow me to properly protect my environment. It's going to give me that extra visibility that I want. And one of the things that I also like about Sysmon is that Sysmon actually includes quite a large amount of metadata with each one of the events. And that metadata actually provides me more information that I can write rules on. And if I'm doing threat hunting, it allows me to target more specifically the type of actions that I want to target. Where can I get Sysmon? Well, Sysmon, I can actually download it directly from the Sysinternals webpage from Microsoft. So if I go www.sysinternals.com, it will take me straight to the Sysinternals page for Microsoft. And I can actually download Sysmon from here, or I can download all of the utilities if I want. One of the good things from this webpage is that I can simply go here and I can see what are the latest releases that are coming out, which is awesome. 
because it also includes information as to what was updated for that specific tool. My recommendation to you is to actually subscribe to the SysInternals blog. If you subscribe to the RSS feed, you're going to be getting notifications as new versions of Sysmon and other utilities from SysInternals actually come out, which is great. Now, one of the things that we need to keep in mind when we're working with SysInternal tools is the licensing. Microsoft provides all of these utilities as is as we can see here in their terms of services. I've had customers who have actually tried to open tickets with Microsoft and have been told we do not provide support for sysinternal tools. Other customers, depending on the gravity of the situation, have been able to get certain levels of support from Microsoft. What I'm advising you to do is that as new versions of Sysmon come out, download, that version, keep it in a safe place because Microsoft has had to deal with some security bugs in the past with Sysmon and they're not providing older versions, but probably that is the version that works better in your environment. So do keep that version right there and handy for you and also test validate. Develop a process of validating your configurations specifically for your environment. How does it work with other security products? How does it work with your specific version of Windows and the different configuration parameters in your environment? So, so if we actually go into the Microsoft web page and we take a look at the Sysmon download itself, we're going to be able to see everything that it actually provides us. And one of the things that I really, really like is that here in the main settings, when we look at those is that Sysmon is going to do hashing on each one of the different images. That includes the executable DLLs, depending on the event type. So that means that I can use that for my threat hunting and validation. In addition to that, it's going to create a unique GUID for the logon session and for the process ID. Why? Because Microsoft reuses those by having unique values that I can actually use to query the environment that is going to provide me quite a large advantage when I'm doing threat hunting. In addition to that, Sysmon actually covers a wide gamut of different sources as we were able to see in the attack navigator data. If we go at the different events, we're going to actually see that Sysmon is actually able to collect process creation, and by in turn process termination, we have some information about Sysmon itself, about the service. We have also when somebody modifies the time of a file to hide their data, we can actually log process uh, network connections. We can log drive when drivers are loaded into the machine, when DLLs are loaded into the machine. If somebody's trying to do the most common injection technique, which is to create a remote threat, if somebody's abusing raw access, if somebody's accessing another process, for example, LSAS, which a lot of actors actually go after to be able to capture credentials. Uh, we have file creation, we have registry events, uh, when an event, uh, registry key is created or deleted, we can also monitor for values if they're set, if they're actually renamed. We have files, uh, file create stream hash, which is if somebody's using alternate data streams, it also allows us to monitor if an, uh, from where a file was downloaded because uh, one of the things that we are able to look inside of those data streams is what is called as the zone identifier or the mark of the web that includes the URL from where that file was downloaded. Pipe events, this goes into how processes are communicating between each other and also across systems, which is very useful for us. WMI events, as they relate to permanent events, we also are able to get information about DNS events we can also, if somebody's trying to delete a file, we can log that action and we can take an action of archiving that file so we have additional data for us to look at as we're triaging those events. We can also capture clipboard changes, process tampering. That is when somebody's doing process hollowing or herpaderp on a process. We have also file deletion. We can 
look for those. And one of the recent things that Sysmon has been adding is that for the first time, we can actually take blocking actions. So we can block a executable file from being read into disk. We can block a file from being shredded. So this is some of the new stuff that we're seeing right now with Sysmon versions 14 and up that Microsoft is changing that strategy. So as you can see, Sysmon is a great tool to have in your arsenal. I highly recommend that you look into it, test in your environment and deploy it. Sysmon's not for everyone. This means that you really do need a good security team that is going to have the time and also the manager buy-in to be able to provide that time for them to test, validate, write rules, grab threat intelligence that is out there freely. And as new events come in, they can analyze all of that and they can fine tune those rules, test those rules and deploy them. It is a free utility that provides quite a bit of value if you put the work into it. So if your organization is one that is, has the capabilities to take advantage of Sysmon, I highly recommend that you deploy it. Again, as always, I really do hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you enjoyed this series. Please do subscribe and hit the notification bell on YouTube so you're made aware of new videos coming out. And again, thank you.